XY Coder with two uploads today. And I received a request on one of my videos in the comments to make a video uh, about the arm pivot, arm swiveling so that the arm follows the camera, kind of like from my zombie game. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into that. Just a nice little tutorial. So I'm just gonna use the same assets from, um, from my zombie game just to make it easy for myself. So let me go ahead and slice the person here just to make it easy. We'll just do that and apply. There we go, because we only need one, one person. We'll put them right there, maybe make them three by three. Nah, let's go, let's go. Five by f five by six, what are you talking about? All right, five by five. We'll scale them up even more, just so you can see them. So, oops, what the heck? Should be, should be easier than it is. All right, so we have our player here. We will just name this player just to make it a little more attractive. And to, with our player, you want to have a separate arm. So when you make your sprite sheet, I guess that should be the first step instead of me just putting it right on here. When you make your sprite sheet with all your animations, I would recommend doing all of the sprites without an arm. If it, it, This is good if you have a 2D like side game where you only need one arm, um, which I would assume you, you're going to do if you're watching this video. So here's your arm. I'm going to go ahead and add it into the scene. Oops. If you get, no, if you get a blurry sp sprite like that, always remember to... Um, make the filter mode point before you import it if you have a pixel art and then for uh, quality do 32 bit because sometimes you'll get color bleeding and just weird stuff if you don't make the quality 32 bit so go ahead and put your arm in the scene now that it is nice and crisp and 32 bit hd you'll just put it right here that's pretty good i'd say so it's important to make the arm a child of the player by clicking and dragging it on top of the player. And what we do need one more other component to make this work. We are going to need a empty game object. I'm just going to go ahead and name this arm pivot. And we are going to put the arm on the arm pivot. So it's like a three level thing. So attach the arm to the arm pivot because we want the arm to move separate from the uh, from the player basically. So you can see the arm pivot here is represented by this little circle which is nice. And uh, oops, one sec. Bef before you attach the arm, you might wanna position the arm pivot so it's in the right spot for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right where the shoulder would be. And then we can reattach the arm. And there we go. So our arm pivot is in the correct position, should be now. So we're gonna go ahead and add a component to this and we'll just call it pivot. It's gonna be a new script and oops, new script and create an add. So once it goes dark, we can go ahead and open up Visual Studio and here we go. So we can leave all these the same pivot, mono behavior, start. We're going to need, I think, just one variable. We're going to need to call our player. And this is just to fix some errors that are, that'll, that'll happen later on. So we're going to go ahead and create a game object, a public game object. We'll just call it my player. And then we can delete the start function and we can actually delete the update function because we need to use um, fixed update. Now, if you don't know why, this is why. Fixed update is what you want to use for physics-based stuff because um, the update function is based on your frames. It's updated every frame. So let's say you have a really good computer and you play a game at 144 hertz, um, like me, and that means everything in the update function will update at 144 hertz, basically. So if I'm playing at 30 FPS, it'll update every 30 every one frame but because you're playing at 30 s 30 fps it'll be slower so that's good for um a lot of stuff but anything physics based or movement based or velocity based or force based you want to use fixed update because no matter what your frame rate is it'll always update as at a uh, at a fixed interval obviously so in our fixed update we are going to go ahead and uh we're going to create a vector three and we're gonna call this um, difference. Now this is going to be our uh, mouse position. So we're gonna go camera.main.screen to, uh, to world point. 
where is that? There it is. And input dot mouse position minus transform dot position. Now, what this does, we are creating a new vector three, obviously, uh, with camera screen to world point input mouse position. So uh, if you if you just get the raw input mouse position, it is going to get the position of your mouse on the screen instead of uh, your mouse in the game window um, or the game world, I guess they refer to it as. So all this is doing right now is it's in, in it's converting that screen position of the mouse to the world position of the mouse so you can have a better effect. And then minus the transform position, this is the position of the arm pivot. So that's just the difference. So it's kind of like um, the distance, kind of. Um, we are going to go ahead and normalize this value. Normalizing just makes it so it's b between 0 and 1. So the values are easier to work with. Um, and it fixes some issues. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create, uh, we'll call it rotation Z. So this is actually going to be the angle that we are working with. It's gonna. This is going to be the angle of our mouse, so that our arm at our that our arm points to that angle. So you want to do math f a tan a tan two, and we want to go ahead and put in our difference y and difference x values, and we want to multiply that by math f. Uh, radians to degrees because we want to convert it to uh, degrees makes it easier to work with because we want that angle so now we need to actually rotate it so this is just calculating the rotation angle of our arm what we, it's gonna point it to our mouse so now we actually have to um, we need to rotate the actual object so we can do transform rotation equals quaternion. Quaternion is the unity rotation. So quaternion Euler. Euler is a three, three, um, three argument function. And rot rotation Z. So we're going to rotate it not by the X, not by the Y, but on the Z axis. Now the Z axis for a side scroller 2D game is going to be like on the screen, um, pretty much like the arm rotating instead of like a 3d game where it would be going away from you and coming back it is just like um in a circle on the screen basically so now this is not done yet but we can go ahead and save that and it's going to ask for my player we'll need that eventually so i'll just put it there you can just click and drag your player object into that box and now if we run the game you'll see our arm points to our mouse just like that pretty easy but then here's the thing um, when you go on the other side of your player, the hand is upside down, which can cause a lot of issues later on with holding guns and stuff. Trust me, I know. And uh, we need to fix this. So this can be pretty easily fixed, kind of. Um, I'm going to have the code either in the description or like in a paste bin or something if you want to just copy and paste it. Personally, I recommend not copy and pasting, even if you're just watching me write the code. Um, I recommend typing it out with me so you get a feel for it. That's a really good way to be able to ingrain code more in your mind and be able to remember it, really. Um, so we need to make it so that the arm turns right side up even when, you're, when, you're, um, even when your mouse is on the other side of the body because we want, we want the arm to always be right side up. And this was something that I noticed in um, Bracky's video because this script is a lot of... Um, it's a pretty standard script, but this is the one that uh, Brackies uses. Um, and he, in his 2D platformer tutorial, never actually fixed that issue. Um, I don't know why. I guess he just didn't really feel like it. I mean, I guess it's not too, too important, you know? So this right here is if statement, if rotation Z is less than negative 90 or rotation is greater than 90. Uh, let me remember, this is... Okay, yeah, this is... Um, this is basically saying if uh, if our arm is on the other side of the body, like if our player is pointing on the other side of the bar body, so not to the right, that we want to do another if, state if statement. If my player uh, transform dot Euler angles dot y equals zero, so if they are facing to the right, 
then we can go ahead and transform. I always do that wrong. Dot local rotation equals quaternion Euler uh, 180 zero space zero negative rotation Z. So this line here, this is saying if our arm is on the other side of the body and the player is still facing to the right, then still flip, um, still flip the arm. Actually, wait, let me, let me remember. Yeah, yeah, this is just flipping the arm on the X axis. So from left to right, imagine that you're looking at the arm right now and the hand is pointing to the right. All this is doing is literally just flipping the hand, just flipping the hand so that the hand is pointing to the left. So we don't have to rotate uh, up and down on the Y yet. Uh, we can say else if I'm just doing this if player is pointing to a certain direction because what my problem was um, was that when I turn the player um, when I turn the player to the left because you're just flipping the sprite you, there were other issue other issues where the arm wouldn't flip and stuff so down here we're gonna say else if my player transform dot Euler angles dot y is equal to 180. So if they're facing to the left now, so if they're facing the direction they should, if basically they're facing the direction that they're not naturally facing, um, that's what this if statement is saying. So if they're facing to the left, we need to um, make up for that because here's here's a good way to look at it. The arm is connected to the player. So if you flip the player, if you were to um, if you were to flip the player to, yeah, if you were to flip the player this way in the game, the arm would go with it. Uh, so basically this is saying no matter what direction our player is facing, we want to keep it pointing at the mouse no matter what. Keep the arm pointing at the mouse. Because that was an issue. Because the game wants to flip it to the direction of the body, but we don't want that. We want it to the direction of the mouse. So we want to we want to transform transform rotation return in Euler we want to flip on the x-axis and this is where we mirror it up on the y-axis and then keep the rotation value rotation Z so basically saying we want to not only let's see we don't not only want to flip it this way but we want to flip it that way too because it'll be upside down so let me just get that back so now this is the full script right here so now no matter what direction your player is facing, I'll show you, no matter what direction your player is facing, the arm will always be upright because once you reach up here and hit that negative 90, it flips and flips and flips and flips. We go to our scene and turn our player. Oops, wrong object. Player that way. The arm will still stay pointed in the direction that you want. See if I can get a better example of that. So we're pointing this way, and it'll still point. Even if the arm is connected to the player and should be pointing this way right now, we can make it point this way, and it always points upright. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple tutorial. Uh, I don't really do, I've never really done a tutorial before, so I hope this was pretty straightforward and clear, and I hope it was e easy for you guys to follow. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you'd like more tutorials, just <laughs> like and subscribe and comment so yeah thank you guys so much and i will see you in the next video whenever i do that so see ya